Okay, Duke, how are we on the levels? We're good. Okay. Finally. <laughs> Fix myself first. <laughs> <laughs> you know the funny thing is they all do that as soon as as soon as like now we're starting then they start getting like oh. let me get ready let me fix one or two uh-uh. mm. Mm. <laughs> anyways welcome to the show today is going to be an interesting one because how long have we been planning this months now yeah almost a year Mon <laughs> almost a year duke can you hear that almost a year let's start with the you know you as a person you know for our listeners and our audience how how do we introduce you or how would you rather introduce yourself who is i've always been confused it michelle michelle Michelle. Michelle. <laughs> Michelle. It's Michelle. Okay. Michelle. Who is Michelle? And how is your origin story around you to where you are now to being um, an entrepreneur, a female boss leader, and things like that? Okay. So Michelle <laughs> is a young lady who is also known as Miss Reed. <laughs> Everybody and knows you as Miss Reed. Trust me. <laughs> and um, uh, I'm from Zimbabwe. I was born and bred in a city called Bulawayo. And it's in the southwest, yeah, southwestern part of Zimbabwe. Mm, Bulawayo. Bulawayo. Bula Did I say that correctly? Bu. 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 <laughs> <laughs> it's Bulawayo. <laughs> Bulawayo. Yeah, something okay, along those okay, lines. Okay, I'm doing good. Yeah, yeah trying. Okay. Bulawayo, going to Ziatunga. That's how we introduce our city. <laughs> so, yeah, that's where we're from. My surname is Mklanga, by the way. And I know you cannot pronounce my surname properly. So, mm. yeah. Um, I'm the first child. And I've got four sisters. Mm. Yeah, there are no boys in my family. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess that's where the boss lady comes part of in. it comes in. Because okay. it's kind of inborn. Yeah. Having to be the child who mm. has to take a lead and set standards for those young girls who are coming after me. So I guess I've always been that kind of person. Yeah, and um, I came to China in 2016, September the 1st, I landed here, and I was a student doing my bachelor degree in international trade and economics in Shanghai. Mm. Yeah, so I spent my four years there, and... During those four years, that's when I took my entrepreneurship um, dreams um, to another level. So I was running my company, which is the first one, by the way. At that point, we, um, and the name of the company is Eureka um, Educational Consultants. And basically what I've been doing via that company is bringing students to come and study in China under scholarship or self-paid programs. Yeah, so I've been doing that basically since 2015 before I came to China. Mm. But, it, but then I started being more serious about it when I was now in China because um, I was in a situation or environment which made it so uncomfortable for you to just sit down and not find a side hustle or stuff along those lines. Yeah. So that's where it all started. And then um, years down the line, I had a wish of um, registering an international trade company after having done a bachelor degree in international trade, yeah. of course. So I decided to put my skills... Um, or rather the knowledge that, that I had gained to use. Hence, I ended up registering an international trade company, Import-Export, mm. rather, last year. 
So the dream came true. The company is registered in Shanghai. And I'm launching the website today. Ooh, okay. <laughs> so I, I, I'm guessing that is the announcement because I saw on your yes. WeChat. Ah, oh, I see, I see. That's the announcement. So okay. we're done with the website and okay. everything else. It's okay. been a tedious process, but then, yeah, we're done with everything. Nice. So just in case people want to check out the website, what is the website? What should they go to? I think I'll have to give you the link. Okay, okay. <laughs> so the links will be attached. Thank you. In the show notes today. <laughs> great, great. Yeah. Um, so also just um, phrasing off of that, being in Shanghai, because I feel like a lot of um, a lot of people here, right, have at one point in time been in different places. Yeah. I've always been in Nanjing. Mm -hmm. So I just you know travel to Shanghai, travel to Beijing, and everything. But like Nanjing is the vibe. But you started off in Shanghai, which is like a, that's like, you know, that's like dope, dope city. Yeah. And then now you're coming back to Nanjing, mm -hmm. right? Well, how, how different is that for you in terms of the vibe as a foreigner in China? Well, okay, Nanjing is kind of chilled. <laughs> Nanchang is on some chilled vibes. Like the, the vibes are just way too she's, chill. She's trying to be nice, dude. <laughs> she's trying to be nice. Look at that. No, but honestly speaking, Nanchang is way too chill than Shanghai. And yeah, it is. Um, actually, it was one of the, the questions that I used to get a lot from people. Okay. I'd be like, Michelle, how can you leave Shanghai and come to study in Nanchang? Yeah. I'm like, okay. <laughs> What's wrong with that? <laughs> But then here's the thing. Um, Shanghai is basically more like a city for, for hustlers or people who are all about getting money mm. and getting it very fast in huge amounts. Mm. So it's not the perfect environment for someone who really wants to study and be into academics and all that. Mm. And um, Nanchang is kind of like the opposite of that. It's quite easy for one to study and focus on the, um, maybe their research and all, this, all the things related to school when they are here than when they are in Shanghai. There are so many distractions that side. Mm. So coming here really put me like, you know, in focus when it comes to academics. Yeah. I've read a lot <laughs> since, since I came, came here, here. I see. than I did when I was in Shanghai. I see. Mm -hmm. I see. So if we want to get money, Duke. We're going to Shanghai. <laughs> <laughs> you should sure need to do that. <laughs> you so, sure need to do yeah, that. But let's use that to segue into a more um, broad, um, you know, perspective. The Beijing Olympics. I know that you guys watched something about it yesterday or something. The closing ceremony. The closing ceremony. Yeah. Um, so what? what is your general impression of like the whole, you know, the whole Winter Olympics being here in China and things like that? Mm, um, it would have been nice, first of all, if we could, could have managed go to go there. Yeah. Right, but right. sadly, some of us had, had been anticipating, you know, mm. watching them live, but then we couldn't just go there. So that was a bad thing on our side. But then overall, like, um, China did a, a very good job. I like the whole technology thing, mm. you know, around the stadium. And oof, it was quite a spectacular event that we watched yesterday. And yeah, even more, I enjoyed the fact that we did have like six African countries. Yeah. Present. Yeah. 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 So that was, that was something um, to look forward to. Yeah. As far as I know, actually, I heard that it was very difficult to actually get access to, um, to the Olympic Village because I do have friends who went mm -hmm. and they were talking about how it was nice and all of that, but the stress of having to get tested. Oh, um, yeah. I think it was twice a day. For yes, real? Yes, just to That's make sure that... Lot. Yeah, just to make sure that, you know, everybody stays safe and yeah, everything. Yeah, so yeah. it was... As much as, yes, I would have liked to be there, but I don't think I want to go through... The whole that testing. whole testing twice a day and all of that. Were they putting that thing on the nose or? I don't even oh. know. I don't even want to find out, but it's. I wouldn't it, manage. You know. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't manage. 
Oh, yeah. interesting. Okay, yeah. now let's come to what interesting topics here. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, you are a Pan-Africanist. Of course. Yes, you are a Pan-Africanist. Mm-hmm. I wanted to ask, I've always wanted to ask you, what does that mean to you? It means life and death. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. Yeah. Whoa. Okay. Yeah, it's that deep. <laughs> um, me being a Pan-African means that I get to share the struggles of everyone who is of African descent. And for some of us, as long as you've got a skin color like mine, you're an African. So be it you're from the United States, you're from wherever, you're a brother to me, you're a sister to me, and we should have like common goals. And the main one being of improving our lives, um, restoring the dignity of our people that has been stripped away over the years because of several, you know, reasons and all. So that's one of the reasons why I'm saying it's a matter of life and death. It's something that's so important that should be on the agenda of each and every one of us. Yeah. And I'm from a place, or rather in my language, um, there's this concept of Ubuntu. Yeah. Mm. And there is a proverb that says, Ubuntu, Ubuntu, Ubuntu. It simply translates to a person is a person by other people. Just hearing you say that thing, like I'm already smiling. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know what it means, but I'm smiling. <laughs> yeah. So it basically means a person is a person by other people. So this whole thing of individu- individualism or trying to prosper alone is not part of who we are. We are more like focused or more into, you know, growing as a group, as a people than we do individually. So, yeah, our people come first and we must leave basically to make sure that we improve each and every life of um, theirs. Interesting. Interested. Yeah. Um, I mean, to to sort of expand on that as well is the concept of being a Pan Africanist. I I think that not too many people truly understand what yeah. it means, and you find that across board. Some people say, "Oh, um, it means Africa," or it's either you're pro Africa or against Africa. Mm-hmm. So in your, you know, there's that extreme of it's either our way or the highway right Mm -hmm. so the question is in that spectrum is there a chance to be flexible with anything or is it just that extreme measure as well because there's a lot of definitions of what this thing means um just like we were discussing about feminism and you said oh i'm not a feminist and i'm like okay (laughs) well we'll get back to that but you know let's bring that concept to to being someone who is pan-africanist is it Mm -hmm. a my way or the highway? You know, where, where do we strike the balance? Okay, I think it tends to be difficult, especially nowadays, because of the whole issue of democracy and many people in our continent supporting liberalism, for mm. example. So all these, um, you know, schools of, um, schools of thought they tend to make people not to, um, you know, approach the whole issue of um, Pan-Africanism the way it's supposed to be approached. Um, Taking into consideration that we live in a democratic society, in courts, and I mean in courts. (laughs) (laughs) Shades. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Taking into consideration that we live in a democratic society, um, people should be allowed to be against an Africanism if they're African, because isn't we are trying to be tolerant? But uh, for example, if I'm to be fair and be the advocate of Pan Africanism, 
um, that I am. I would say it doesn't make sense for an African or a person of African descent not to be Pan-African. Well, why is that? Why do you think so? <laughs> okay. Oh, I don't want to touch some, <laughs> some, you know, <laughs> some topics. No, no, it's, it's okay. I mean, it's a question of perspective, right? Because the only way we're truly going to help people learn yeah. about things like this is sharing this perspective. This information, yeah. Um, and the reason I, I say this is because, so the previous episode, I was also talking to to actually two African, young African leaders here in China, mm -hmm. and they had very interesting insights as well that, uh, you know, a lot of people would say, hmm, okay, I didn't know that before. So, and we get to that point by having this conversation, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, Which yeah. is why I'm saying, believing that every person who um, is, you know, is blessed with melanin skin, whether you're from the Caribbeans, whether you're from um, America, whether you're from Africa, and, you know, that you should be pro that movement, yeah. right? If we have a, you know, a, a legitimate reason to say this is why we think you should do this. It might help more people to understand that struggle and get on board. So that's yeah. why I was asking that question. Okay. Okay. For, from my um, own perspective, yeah. Um, I've noticed one thing that other people from other continents or other people from other races they tend to be so united when it comes to improving the lives of their own people. Take a look at Asians, for example. They might be from different countries, right? Mm. But then they've got some common goals that they set and, you know, they accomplish them for their countries, of course, and again for their own people, yeah? Um, take a look at Arabs as well. Like, you find that similar pattern, you know, that you get with the Asians and the Europeans, the white people, for example. But then when you come to Africans and people of African descent, we are not as united. We are not as united. But instead, we try to fit into other people's societies. But then no matter how much we try to fit into their societies, we cannot or rather, so far, we haven't been really welcomed. You might be welcome, but then there's a long arm greeting you, you know, yeah. to be greeting you from the other side. And um, again, if you look at um, the way other people view us, yeah, as long as you have a skin like ours, they don't really care whether you're from the United States, you're from Africa, you're from Canada, or wherever. They, they tend to stereotype us like the, like the same way. Um, they won't say, okay, we're going to be a bit less racist, for example, towards this one because they're from the United States. I um, mean, we'll be more racist towards this one because they're from Africa. No. And I know, like, you've seen that. You've experienced that to some point. Um, so at the end of the day, we've got common struggles, common struggles which cannot be, you know, done away with if we are not united. We need to speak with one voice. We need to have the same agenda for our people, and we need to collectively act towards accomplishing um, the goals that we set for our people. Um, there's a common saying, of course, united we stand, but divided we fall. That's right. That's yeah. right. So. United we stand, um, divided we fall. And I think you just sort of, you know, put a touch on that. I think if I hear you correctly, yeah. what you're advocating for is that at the end of the day, um, it's better that we are united, right, as as humans generally, yeah. um, but more so because there is a certain group of people that have been represented in a different way as they should. Yeah. So um, hopefully, hopefully we'll see changes because, I mean, it's a question of there are all these problems. And just yeah. like you said, if we do come together, 
um, we might be able to force a change um, in our society. So yeah. uh, I and think again, that's, like, yeah. Like one doesn't necessarily have to be an African or a person of um, African descent to, to be Pan-African. Pan exactly. I've got friends who are white. Exactly. I've got friends who are Arabs who are actually so Pan-African. And I'm like, okay, this is the world we need. <laughs> like, um, besides being a Pan-African, right? I'm a person who is for all humanity, right? Yeah. But as much as I'm for all humanity, you know, we live in a world where people are kind of selfish, as I mentioned earlier on. Mm. And it would be nice for me, for example, to see maybe some women being, you know, abused in a maybe in an Arab country or in the United States, and I stand up for them. Women who are not of my, my, my race or my color. It would be nice for me to do that. You get me? Mm. That's the world we're supposed to live in. Well, good, good yeah. points right there. Good points, solid <laughs> points. And um, you also mentioned something that's interesting around how um, it feels like the world where we're at now, there's a lot of differences in people. I mean, there's differences of maybe, you know, we shouldn't see them, but they've always been there. Society has programmed us to see these differences. Do um, you think it's more exaggerated? Is that, I don't know if that's the word, but do you think we see that more now, that difference? Maybe I might sound like a conspiracy theorist. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, we have Inspector Duke in the house. Duke is going to fish it out. Duke will I fish it out. I might sound like um, a conspiracy theorist, yeah? Mm. But then here's the thing. You find a situation whereby a certain group of people is exalted and made to, you know... Um, think or feel like they are better than everyone else, yeah? And a certain group is kind of, you know, looked down upon. Mm. And once you've got that gap, there will never be unity. So that is done on a racial level. It's been done on, like, you know, continental level, Yeah? whereby people from a certain continent are like this, you know, the other ones are like that. You, you, mm. you get that. It's been done on um, national levels. Mm. Yeah. It's been done again on regional, like, you know, levels. Provincial, you can go all the way. It's been done on a tribal level. It's been done on a family level as well basically every levels of society they are create yeah there are people who are creating this division so that society remains disintegrated that's what i believe hence we've got feminism <laughs> which is one of the divisions <laughs> So, okay, you know? <laughs> okay, okay. Let, let's, let's take a step back here, right? Because I, when I asked you the first time, I said, oh, are you a feminist, mm -hmm. right? You said, no. I'm not. I am not a feminist. No, I'm not. So I'm, I'm curious as to, because like I said before, this is also something that it's, it's, there's no clear definition of what is and what isn't. I feel like different groups are starting to come up with different definitions. Yeah. What do you think feminism is? And why aren't you a feminist? Because to a lot of guys on the surface, right? A lot of people, I don't want to say guys. That's, that's very, it's very inaccurate. Yeah, a lot yeah. of people would think, oh, feminism is advocacy for women. Mm -hmm. And historically, up until now, we've seen that that's, that's the case. Women have been suppressed socially through a lot of standards. Uh -huh. So when you say you're not a feminist, I think that um, what people will hear is, oh, I don't support women. I'm not pro-women's rights. And they're like, wait, what? Nah. What? <laughs> so let's, you know, let's, 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 let's settle that score. Because I know that you are for women. I, I've seen you go at people when they, you know, they, they say something that About should not women. be said. <laughs> yeah. So what do you think feminism is? And why would you say that you were not feminist? Um, 
it depends on who one is, you know, um, when it comes to the definition of feminism. Okay, there's basically two types of feminisms for me. Okay. There's the one that used to be there, and there's the one that's there now. Yeah. Okay. The one that used to be there was basically the feminism that um, advocated for the rights of women. Yeah. Um, society, basically, because of patriarchy, has been, um, you know, segregating women or looking down upon women and um, not giving them equal opportunities that men are getting. For example, um, you'd find a situation whereby there's a family which has got, of course, boys and girls, and then the male child gets to be the one who is prioritized when it comes to education. He's the one who'll be taken to school, and, you know, they graduate and do everything, but the woman is just not allowed to do the same. That's one. Two, both can get a job, yeah, males and females, and their salaries are not the same, yet they are doing the same job, yeah? And the reason you get for that is that the woman, the other one is a woman, hence they are getting a smaller salary, of which I'm not for that. I'm for the rights of women, yeah? I'm for equality, when it comes to opportunities for work and study, for example, and, you know, other freedoms that women um, deserve. But I'm not for the modern kind of feminism, the hashtag men are trash movement. <laughs> yeah? I'm not for that. Um, as much as I believe in equality, um, you know, for both sexes, there is an undeniable truth. And that undeniable truth is that a man will always be a man. A woman will always be a woman. Well, what does that mean? There is a, a reason. There is a reason why you were created the way you are created. Biologically, physically. Okay. Spiritually, if you believe in African spirituality, that is, there is a reason why you were created the way you created. And there, there's a reason why women are created the way they are created. You know, we, are, we were created to complement each other. Yeah? Imagine a world whereby everyone is a male. How would that be? Ooh. Duke, how would that be <laughs> if we're all men in this world? Or if we're all women, how would that be? Like, it just wouldn't make sense. For me, I, I advocate for, you know, like the rights of women. But at the same time, I appreciate being a woman. I'm that kind of a person who knows that there are things which a man can do, which I cannot do. Yeah? There, there are things which... Um, I can do that a man cannot do because of who we are. As an African, we've got gender roles. We've had gender roles for the longest time. Yes, a man is a provider for a family. It's, 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 it's just how things are, yeah? But then the rise of toxic um, feminism, I would call it, has taken us or put us in a situation whereby um, being a feminist nowadays basically means hating on men or challenging them, even, even in things which do not need to be challenged. You get me? And that has caused, you know, like, it, 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 has, it has had a negative impact on our society. How am I saying that? You find a situation whereby families are no longer sticking together. 
there has been a, a, a rise in, you know, single parents over the years. And one of the reasons is because of feminism. Yeah? Women no longer respect men. That's a fact. Like, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. Many women no longer respect men. Um, in my language, <laughs> there is um, this phrase that says, um, most of the women nowadays are indota must. Indota is a man. Oh. <laughs> the, a man must. <laughs> a man must. <laughs> so I think it has kind of infiltrated into like people's mind that a man needs to be like A, B, C, D, E, of which those standards are set by women. And I don't think it's proper. Let the man be the man. You be the woman. You know? There's a phrase that I also like, or a, a saying rather. It says, um, women who seek to be like men lack ambition. You should embrace your feminine, your feminine side and let men embrace their masculine side. Yeah, those are just my thoughts on that. One thing I wanted to, to, to circle back on was when you mentioned gender roles. Yeah. Um, we're trying to, you know, remove roles in society. And basically... The whole concept of society is that people have roles. They have things to do. Doctors are yeah. doctors. Soldiers are soldiers. Mm -hmm. um, which is clear. But is it possible that in those roles, that's actually the root of the suppression of women? And if not, right, how, what is the balance? How do people balance that to be comfortable enough to say look i am for women's rights yeah. but that doesn't mean that i have to you know to dislike men mm -hmm. um so how, how do you strike that balance for you personally i think you can just educate people okay yeah educate people need to be educated and they they need to unlearn stuff that society has already taught them so far you know, nowadays there is a huge power of social media, for example. Most of his ideas travel very fast. And it all starts from a tender age. Most females nowadays are being programmed to see themselves as if they are more, um, you know, more powerful than men. You get me? Mm. I myself, I remember when I was at primary school, I was um, part of the Brownies club, girl guides. Mm. And yeah, Brownies ain't the girl guides. <laughs> so you, you find, I, okay, I, I noticed this when I was now digging deeper into um, this whole toxic femi feminism, that we've been groomed from a young age, such that by the time you get to be maybe at secondary school somewhere there, you already have a foundation of that toxic femini um, feminism. Yeah. And when, when you're now doing literature, for example, which is what I did, I did literature in English at high, um, secondary and high school, you get to be given set books, which are written by some authors, whom I will not mention, <laughs> who are very much, you know, pro-toxic um, feminism. And I remember myself kind of like not being told to be a feminist or a toxic femi um, a feminist, but from reading and answering your assignment questions and answering the exam questions, you get to think broad. And the more you think, the more you put those thoughts of yours into reality or you relate them to what's happening in the world. So at the end of the day, by the time you finish high school, you're already a feminist, a toxic one. Without knowing. <coughs> mm -hmm. Without really knowing. So it all starts with education. People need to be educated because as much as it is important to teach the girl child that they must stand for themselves, they must um, be independent, 
they can they must achieve their goals and not be stopped by anyone it is unfair if you are if you are only advocating for the rights of the girl child and not advocating for the rights of the boy child i'm for the rights of the boy child as well i wouldn't mind working with young gents on a certain project and all as much as feminism is all about equality it becomes wrong if you promote equality or rather if you advocate for power for fe um, females and leave the the males at the bottom mm. you are basically being like those males yet you are a female so advocate for both train the young boys to treat the girls well and there'll be men who will treat the women well but once you train the females that they are way above the guys men will be men as i mentioned they've got their ego the women will bruise their egos and at the end of the day you increase gender based violence that's a fact and you increase again the the number of broken families you increase you know so much crime so it goes back to grooming both sexes and not just one mm. and if both are, are told that you guys are equal you are not better than the boys that um, and then boys like you're not better than the girls if you instill that kind of a mindset from when they are young i think they'll grow up to be better citizens interesting yeah. interesting wow very very powerful strong insights um and i also like the fact that um in all the ideologies that you have you know i i hear a lot of very african values in those things which is the concept of family the concept of home the exactly. concept of you know the social roles and um uh, i think it's very possible that you know all of these things can exist together of course and we can create you know a very very peaceful world without having one side coming at each other and everything yeah yeah we're no longer grounded especially my generation that's a that's a very powerful word grounded yeah we're no longer that's grounded <laughs> we're no longer grounded we're all jumpy <laughs> 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 you know you know when you're making popcorn and you put the oil <laughs> like in a pot and you put the popcorn inside mm. see how how they jump like this one is like this you know it's mm. all jump people are just like that we no longer grounded by being grounded i i'm you know like i'm thinking do you mean grounded in self or grounded through an external entity in humanity ah okay grounded in ubuntu mm. basically in what is ubuntu again <sighs> That question is Because I hear so this a lot. Huge. I hear this a lot. Mm. And there, there, there are people who have um, gotten to give um, a definition of Ubuntu, which is not really its original definition. Many people say Ubuntu means I am because we are. Mm. It doesn't mean doesn't, that. It goes way deeper. That's like 0.5% of what Ubuntu is. Yeah. In my language, a person is called Umuntu, yeah? And, um, okay, Ndu basically is the greatest ancestor, yeah, of people. And Umuntu means the child of Ndu. The child of the ancestor. The child of Ndu, like his, the, the name of the, the greatest ancestor yes. is Ndu, yeah? So, like a god. Yeah, not really. So it's different? <laughs> okay. So <it's> just <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so Umuntu, right, is a child of Ndu. And then um, Isintu is the way of life of the children of Ndu, right? So you've got the, 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 the leader of the clan or the family, whichever term you'd want to use. And um, under that, you've got the people, yeah? And below the people, you've got Isintu, which is the way of life. 
you don't just live like you, you're born by a baboon or something. No, <laughs> like there's a certain way that you have to live. Yeah. Yeah, if you're a human being. And then Ubuntu, those are the values, moral values, cultural values as well of the children of Udo. So Ubuntu is defi um, being defined like um, I am because we are, is part of what really Ubuntu is. Ubuntu goes, it goes way beyond humanity. It goes way beyond what you do for someone else. It has got a lot to do with what you do for yourself. Or how you, how you, um, you know, fit into society. But most of it has got everything to do with you. Some internal work. Mm. It's that kind of thing that tells you that, you know, for example, I remember when I was at um, secondary school, um, there's a guy who used to sleep on the pavement, on the road, like, you know, by one of the shops on the way for, um, to school for me. So after noticing that guy, I remember the first time I saw him, I just passed by. But then when I was at school, part of me was busy asking, okay, Michelle, so you, you, you just, you know, it's winter right now. It's cold in my country. Zimbabwe is cold in winter. <laughs> so I, I was like, you've got a bed, you know, there's a heat at home, you eat hot food, and you keep warm. But then that guy is sleeping on top of cardboard boxes and he just doesn't have much. And all this cold is on him. And he doesn't even have breakfast. You get me? So... I was basically touched from that day. I was like, I know maybe I might not be able to assist him with the house and stuff, but I'll do what I can. So I remember every time, every morning, I would take my breakfast for, and then I'll put it in a plastic. If it's bread, I'll toast it and put everything inside. Um, then I would just pass by and just and touch him, him and give it to him. Wow. I feel like... I felt at peace. I wasn't at peace when I was in class knowing that I passed him and did, and did nothing. I did that until he was no longer by that area. Wow. How, how, so, long, how long did he stay there for? Some, like, it was just winter. Like two uh, or three months. Wow. So I'll do that. And I remember at some point, so you know, my parents should forgive me for this. I wanted to steal a blanket and go. And give it to him. Yeah, I wanted to do that. I was like, ah, if, if, if Gren is going to, like, you know, <laughs> say something to me, well, <laughs> I'll just make an excuse. So Ubuntu goes way deeper than that. If, you do, if you're not grounded in Isintu or in your own culture, there is no way you can practice, you can practice Ubuntu. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. Ubuntu. Uh, I like that word. I should probably read up more on that to understand the concept because yeah. I like how you've broken down the the various facets of what that word means. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I yeah. probably would never truly understand mm -hmm. um, because I think I might not be able to understand the cultural significance of those things, but. So lastly, because we're running out of time and mm -hmm. because you're sleepy, we want you to go to sleep. <laughs> Your birthday is yeah. coming up. Oh, Dude, yeah. she <laughs> will be turning up this city, y'all. So yeah. tell us, what, what, what are we looking forward to? Because I'm going to be there. So, you know, is mm -hmm. there any preview of what we're going to get that day? Okay. Um, okay, me being me, me being Miss Reeds, Michelle. Of course, I'm pro-African, pro whatever. <laughs> so <laughs> my birthday, um, the theme of my birthday is shades of melanin. That's right. Yeah. So we're expecting afros. We're expecting any suits or any dresses which are the colors of mm. any melanin mm. yeah our skin tones come in different you know tones and, and, and all that so you just pick one and look glamorous and you come and enjoy of That's course right. we're going to have some uh, um, african music 
Absolutely. Uh, of course. How can we have an African party without <laughs> African music? <laughs> <laughs> We're going to turn up and all and yeah. yeah great, great. Um, I think that's all we'll be able to take for today because of our time. It's been a pleasure to have you on the show. Hopefully someday we're going to be able to get you back <laughs> to talk more about because I'm really curious about this Ubuntu, right? Yeah. Um, so that you would just sort of share more understanding about that from your cultural perspective yeah. as well. And I think that's all we'll take for today. Thank you very much for coming on the show. Sorry that we're doing this very late. <laughs> By the way, you are the first guest on this show in this year that we're doing this live in person Yay! all the other guests <laughs> they've been online so you're the first person wow. you know coming on the show live wow. so we appreciate that we appreciate that Thank and you. yeah i look forward to having an amazing time at your birthday party mm -hmm. and that will be all for today and see you next time thank you Tayo. <laughs> see you next time yeah <laughs> Okay. Woo!